Hello YouTube, would you like to know about directed graphs, relations, and equivalence relations? If so, stay tuned. Okay, so let's get on with it now. Uh, I have a set of exercises that I'm going to do on just that topic. Okay, so let's begin. Now, our first problem is about just trying to um, construct a graph. All right, but this is going to be a directed graph. All right, so I'll scroll down and we'll enter this command and see what we get. All right, so I'll write graph. I put in my brackets so that I uh, have a hope of getting correct syntax. All right, and I'll enter the vertex labels option, minus sign, greater than sign, then I press enter, quotations, name, with an uppercase N. All right, now I'm going to include one goes to two, two goes to three, three goes to one, three goes to two, and one goes to one. All right, now I'll press shift and enter and see what we get. Okay, so now we have this directed graph shown. All right, and what you can see is one going to one by that arrow, three going to one, three going to two, two going to three, and one going to two. That's exactly what we uh, asked for here. All right, so that is an example of an of a directed graph visualized. Okay, so why you're wondering, should you learn about directed graph? Well, they help you to visualize uh, binary relations. Okay, so let's now define what a binary relation is. All right, so down here I've already written some definitions. So first of all, we see that a binary relation from A to B is a subset of A cross B. Now this A cross B uh, refers to the Cartesian product. And that is nothing more than a set of pairs where I take a one from A, one from B, and form a pair. So this uh, binary relation is a subset of, of the pairs made up of elements of A and elements of B in pairs, such as what you see right here. Okay, however, a binary relation on a set A is a subset of A cross A, and that is just the Cartesian product of A with itself. Okay, so these are definitions of binary relation, relations. Now, there are some of particular importance. So the first one is a reflexive relation. relation. Now, it is often um, common to use the letter rho. This is the Greek letter rho, R-H-O, to, to mean the relation. Okay, so an example of a relation might be the greater or equals relation. For example, 4 is greater or equal to 3. Okay, so that is an example of a relation. However, we were talking about reflexive relations. So rho is reflexive if for all x belonging to the set A, x is related to x. Okay, so that's uh, an example of a reflexive relation. So it, x comma x belongs to the relation when you view it as a set of pairs belonging to the Cartesian product. Well, is subset of Cartesian product. Okay, so that's reflexive. Now symmetric. Rho is symmetric if 
for all x and y belonging to A, x is related to y. In other words, x comma y, the pair, is in the set of relations. And this I double F is an abbreviation of if and only if y comma x belongs to rho. Okay, so let's restate that. x comma y is in rho if and only if y comma x y comma x is in rho. So that's when we call it symmetric. Right? So there's, there's a symmetry there. Antisymmetric. Rho is antisymmetric if for all x and y belonging to A, x comma y is in rho and, and y comma x is in rho if this implies that x and y are equal. Okay, now greater or equals to that relation on the set of integers is anti-symmetric, right? Because if 4 is greater or equal to 4, and I swap those around, 4 is greater or equal to 4, then 4 and 4 are equal, right? That's an example of an anti-symmetric relation, relation. Okay, transitive. Uh, rho is transitive if for all x, y, and z in A, if we have x related to y and y related to z, then x is related to z. Now I often bring up the analogy of a friendship. If I, Sam, am friends with Carl and Carl is friends with Tina, it does not necessarily mean that I am friends with Tina, right? You might have such a friendship where you're friends with someone, that someone is friends with someone else, but you really don't like that someone else yourself. That's possible. So friendship is not necessarily transitive, right? It's not transitive. But there are other relations that are transitive. Okay, so then I have another set of definitions, but we'll leave these for now because we want to talk about some relations. Okay, so these arrows denote the relations. So three related to four, then we would write an arrow when we, when we draw that. So that's a good way to uh, think about relations geometrically is to draw their directed graphs. Okay, now that we've said that, let's continue to do these exercises in my Mathematica tutorial. So we've done the first one. Okay, now let's do the second one. So remember Mathematica um, puts pairs with this curly bracket. Okay, so we'll do that. So now I'm going to enter these in Mathematica. Okay, so the first one has A equals the set one, two, three, four. All right, now remember, in Mathematica, this is simply an array, right? But since none of these are duplicated, I can think of it as, as a set. Okay, now R for the set of relations. All right, it is a set of pairs. Set of relations on A. So notice that every one of the elements of these pairs that come from A. Right, so one related to one, then the next one, one related to two, two related to one, two with two, three related to four, four related to one, four related to four. All right, I'll enter that into memory by shift and enter. And then let's find out what we need to do next. Plot a labeled directed graph from R. Use table and indexing of R to plot, or basically to, to give an image of this directed graph. All right, then we've got some code down here. So I'll copy this code. So I'm going to tabulate table, and I'll table over J. J goes from one, to the length of 
length, how do you spell length with the G, to the length of R. Okay, and what I want to tabulate is uh, elements of R. So the jth element of R, but I want to pull out the first one. Okay, so I use this double square brackets to do that. All right, and then that is going to going to the second one. So R J comma two. All right, and let's call this call this G for graph. All right, so uh, well, I'll show you the output of that. Shift and enter. Okay, so now we have an array containing arrows. Right. Okay, now I can go up here and copy some code out. I'll copy this, control C for copy, or you can use the mouse as I did. Then I'll paste this down here, control V, and rather than put this, I'll put G. All right, so I'm pulling uh, things out of G and I'm going to graph it now with a directed graph. Okay, and here is the result. All right, so this, uh, is an image of of this graph uh, sorry yeah of this directed graph it's a directed graph of this relation R right here All right so now let's ask a couple of questions of this is this uh, reflexive well no because we don't have 3 going to 3 right you can see that right there 3 does not go to 3 is it symmetric well, 3 is going to 4, but 4 is not going back to 3, like it is in this case. So no, it's not symmetric. Is it transitive? Well, that's sometimes more difficult to, to uh, find the answer to. Okay, we've got 3 going to 4, 4 going to 1, but look, we do not have 3 going across here to 1. So no, it's not transitive. Okay, um, I think that's probably enough for now. So thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll see you next time.